walk with two legs. See, I can walk because I have two legs. If my one leg is not working, then look at me, man, I can't walk. I'll have to drag myself. Show them the video, please. Look at this guy. Huh? How can he walk, man? Look at his one leg, it's absolutely giving him problems. Huh? He can't walk. This is an example of what happens in our Christian life. Our one leg is the word of God. The second leg is the sacraments, is the Eucharist, the second leg. Both legs have to function. Some people say, well, I'm attending mass. I go for everyday mass. Congratulations to you. But the only one leg is working. The sacramental leg is working. What about the word of God? So you require both legs. Some people may say that I know the word of God, but what about in the sacramental life? And by sacramental life, I mean, if you're out of the sacraments, please get in. If you have not baptized your children, go and baptize them. If you have not registered your marriage and you have got a court marriage, go and solemnize your marriage according to God's law first. Enter into the sacraments because the sacraments become a means for God's grace. And of course, the biggest and the most important sacrament, the summit of all prayer is the Eucharist. So if you're going for the Eucharist, if you're attending every day, wow, you have a wonderful grace. But I ask you, what about the second? Well, the Eucharist is one leg, but the other one is not pulling, man. It's not pulling, man. It's just not pulling. See, how can you grow? You remain at the end as a through him Christian or with him Christian. You will never grow to be a in him Christian. Never. Because you need both the legs. Well, one leg is the Eucharist and the sacrament, but the second leg is the word of God. You will say to me, brother, word of God I've heard so many times. Every Sunday I come for the prayer meeting. Every, every time I go to Porta, I go here, I go there for retreat. That is one way of listening, the public listening. What about your private meditation on the Word of God? Are you daily meditating on the Word of God? Joshua in the Bible, we are told, was shivering after Moses died because he became the leader. He did not know how to lead the people. He was trembling and the Lord said to him, Joshua, don't be discouraged. I tell you one way what you should do. Every day and night meditate on the Word of God. Meditate on, the, on what is written. Meditate on it. This is the private aspect of the Word of God. When you start meditating on it, no? slowly you begin hearing the voice of God. Jesus himself promised, he said, in John chapter 14 and verse number 23, he said, I will reveal myself. He did not say, I may reveal. If he had said, I may, means it's for a few people. Huh? It's for a few brothers, a few selected priests. No, he said, I will reveal myself to all those who love me. So it's a promise that he will reveal, he will speak. You cannot hear his voice until you learn to privately and faithfully every day read and meditate on the word of God. Word of God, one foot, sacrament, another foot. But you know, it's very difficult to do that. We're so lazy. We get up late sometimes. We have no time to read the Bible. Forget about meditation. Often we take breaks from prayer meetings. Often we go for retreats and forget all about it. Afterwards, we are lax in our sacramental life. We become like the world, don't we? Then what keeps us? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one, once he sees you have the desire, he will blow the love of God into your heart. Your heart, as it were, like the heart of St. Philip Neri, when St. Philip Neri died, his heart was found to have a bulge here. And he used to always say to them, my heart bulges for the Lord. And really after that, they found a bulge on his heart. Longing for the Lord. Be like those. And the Holy Spirit will help. And don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit. When he helps, he comes. No wonder he's described as a mighty wind. Have you ever seen a mighty wind? In the year 1995, we had a mighty cyclone in Goa, 1995, unexpected. Huh? So much of water, so much of rainfall, people could not go out so much. 
but we have not really seen the power of wind. Jesus described, he said, the Holy Spirit is like wind. He didn't say the Holy Spirit is wind. It's like wind. And this is a different kind of wind that does not, it does not injure you, but it pushes you away. You want to do certain things which are sinful, it pushes you away. He piss pushes you away. As the Bible says, we are full of fierce desires, but the grace of God is even more stronger. We are full of sinful desires. We want to do this, we want to do that. We hear meetings here, we go out there at home, and again we are back into evil ways. We are full of fierce desires. James chapter 4 says, we are full of fierce desires, but the grace of God is even stronger. And through the Holy Spirit, he blows. He doesn't, you want to do certain things, but he just pushes you. Show me, show me. I just want to show you a video of a severe wind. See how it's stopping these people or pushing these people. Look at this, look at the screen. Look at this, look at this. See the wind blowing. See, look at the strength of the wind. the wind. See, the wind is pushing him back. No wonder. No wonder. Jesus described the Holy Spirit as wind. He says, you cannot see him from where he comes, where he goes, but you will experience him. We can't see the wind from where it is coming, where it is going. But we can surely feel it on us. That's what each of these have felt, like Marlon. I have not done anything. I just introduced him to the Lord through the, through the problem he had. I just gave him the word of God. He started meditating. And meditation on the word of God and the sacraments and the powerful helper, the Holy Spirit. Look at the way Jesus described the Holy Spirit. The helper, he will help you. He helps. And look at how today the life is completely transformed, no? Completely transformed only for Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. As you're listening to me today, have the desire in it. I also want to live for Jesus. I want to be a true Christian. Never mind the great majority who do not know God. I belong here. My heart belongs to the Lord and he'll help you. There are two great obstacles or rather three great obstacles which prevent this process and which do not allow the Holy Spirit to act. First is unforgiveness. We say we are forgiven, we forgiven. I saw you, you hugging one another, shaking hands during the song, I forgive you. But inside we retain anger and hatred. Do you know what is the root of that anger and hatred? We think that, why has God allowed this person to treat me like this? We do not realize that God has control even over that person. And even that person could not have done or not done that thing to me unless God had given him permission. Which means that through that, God was trying to purify me. I look at my life and the so many enemies I had, and today I look at them no longer as enemies because they were the agents or instruments by which my nature was changed. I had a nature which was terrible. I had a nature which was vicious. I had a nature and a tongue which was sharp and God had to purify me from that. And so he used agents. He used others like sandpaper. And you know when sandpaper rubs against the furniture, it's an awful feeling. If the furniture could speak, it would say, ow, ay, ow, why this person? But God is using people as sandpaper to purify us. And when we are fully polished, we are good furniture that can be used by God. But when we don't realize this, when we don't realize that from the stones that our enemies are throwing at us, with those same stones, God is going to build a marvelous palace for us. From the same persecution and harassment and hatred and things that people do to us, God is preparing us for a better plan, 
we lapse into self-pity, into criticism, into confusion, and we do not know where we're going. And that's what Jesus said, a blind man doesn't know where he's going. Especially when your heart is full of hatred, you're like a blind man. And he went on to say, two blind men, where will they go? They will both end up in the ditch. Unforgiveness. And I call it partial forgiveness. Because everyone says, I forgive, I forgive. But they never forgive totally. What God is asking us is for total forgiveness. But what we give is partial forgiveness. And in partial forgiveness, I tell you, the moment the topic of that person comes, out comes all the bile, all the things that person has done to me. That is partial forgiveness. Just imagine, if our Lord every time we are forgiven in confession, every time he's angry with us, he brought out all our past record. This son of mine, Edmund, this is what he did in the past. These are his sins. No, he doesn't do it. Once you are forgiven, we are forgiven. As he says in the prophet Micah, I take your sins and put into the deepest ocean, I've forgotten them. We need the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive. When we try to do it our own way, we become bitter, we become critical, and we don't really know where we are, where we are heading. And unforgiveness is a very contagious disease. It spreads from one to another. An unforgiving person will first infect his best friend, will first infect people close to him or her. And they will also start hating. They will also start unforgiving. We have to break this vicious cycle tonight. We have to decide and realize that even if Jesus did not work according to my plan, he allowed them to do what they did. See what Jesus said to Pilate? When Pilate said, I condemn you to being crucified on the cross. And Jesus said, you can do it only because power was given to you from on high. So anything that anyone has done could not have happened to you unless God allowed them and for a good purpose. You may not see the purpose today. 25 years ago, I did not see the purpose. I didn't see the purpose even 30, 40 years ago. At a time, I did not believe in God. My poor mother was praying for me and I used to mockingly tell her, pray, pray more, pray more, I will come to your God. 40 years ago. Even 30 years ago, I was like that. No, didn't believe in God. But God had his own way and the Holy Spirit was acting. My poor mother called the parish priest in order to convince me. The parish priest came and I told him, Father, I think it is time that you have ruined your life. You open some business, leave priesthood and enjoy life. I told the parish priest, just imagine. This was my, this was my faith or rather unfaith in God. I said to the priest, I don't believe in God. This is all filled in our ears by those priests and nuns. But look at me, 35, 40 years later, look at me. A complete change of my mind. I realized that God allowed that to happen for my good. I would not have been indeed standing on the stage and talking to you about this thing. And some of these here would not have been here unless God had worked through the power of his Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, you don't know the word of God, number one, and you don't know the power of God, that is why you go wrong. Two things, you don't know the word of God, one. Two, you don't know the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit. We don't know the Holy Spirit's work. We underestimate him. We think anyway, what can he do? But if you pray for the Holy Spirit and ask for him every day, you will start seeing that process. I had a boy who came to me, with big plans, brother, I want to marry that girl, brother, I want to open a shop, etc. And I told him, I said, I'm not going to pray over you, but I give you a prayer for the Holy Spirit. He said, what is that? He didn't even know who the Holy Spirit was. I said, you just pray for the Holy Spirit. And he came back after seven days. But this time when he came, he brought a Bible with him to the place where we were preaching. And f two weeks later, he brought two of his friends. And he came to me and I said to him, it's time for you to go for a retreat. I suggest you go to a porta for a retreat. He said, all the way there? You don't have God here? I said, it's better you go there. But then he did not go. But a few weeks later, two months later from the first meeting I had, he came to me and said, brother, I'm ready to go to porta. I said, why? Because my mother has changed by going to this place, porta. My mother was full of parties, full of other life. 
but she has changed completely. And I want to see what they do there in Pota. So he went to Pota to find out what they do there. And in the process, he listened to the word of God. The word of God and the power of God together. Changed this boy. And nine months to ten months later, he came to me and he said to me, Brother, I'm getting a job on the rigs, I'm going. I said, hey, my brother, when you came to me, you said you want to open a shop in Goa. He said to me, brother, that was my plan. But th God's plan is better than mine. It was my turn to look at him. And I said to him, I said, you're going on the rigs if this side, someone takes your girlfriend and gets married to her, then what? He said, whatever God wants. I was shocked. Can you see the power of the Holy Spirit in changing his mind? I didn't meet that boy. He had green eyes, I remember. And one day at the international airport while I was waiting for a flight, two years later, suddenly someone tapped me. And I looked around into a pair of green eyes. He said, brother, do you remember me? I said, of course I remember you. You're on the rigs. He said, no, brother. You know, I went to the rigs and there I started a prayer group. And I used to give them the Bible teachings which I heard at the prayer meeting. And now I got a job in Hong Kong on the rigs. But the whole, I didn't want to go, brother. The whole prayer meeting prayed and they said, you go. And what you have started here, you start there. So I'm going there. I said, oh, very good. Praise the Lord. I said, what about your girlfriend? He said, brother, I want to show you something from his purse he took out. He said, this is the invitation of her wedding with someone else, with a letter. I said, oh. So you must be disappointed. And I lifted my eyes to look at him. Far from crying, he was laughing. He said, brother, you know, she was not meant for me, I think. Because God, if someone is meant for me, will bring that person. And even if God doesn't bring and leave me unmarried, I accept. God knows what is best for me. What I could not do in eight or nine months of preaching, the Holy Spirit did, and he prayed. And that boy became a disciple. Jesus was she's everywhere. You understand what the Holy Spirit can do. Look at what the Holy Spirit did to this wretch who's standing and talking to you today. Look at what the Holy Spirit did to Malan, who was only interested in career and money. Look at what the Holy Spirit did in so many others. Luella is here, her husband, Angelo. Where are you, Angelo? Where are you, Angelo? Are you here? Put up your hand if you're here. Angelo is an is a engineer in the electricity department in charge of an office. There he used to notice lunchtime people are getting together and praying with the Bible open. One day he decided to come there to stop the meeting. So he came with all his boxing gloves that he would disrupt the meeting. But as he heard the word of God, he himself changed. And when he changed, today he's attending the prayer meeting in his own department. And as a result, he and his wife came in and children came in. Their eyes were opened to the word of God. This is what God can do in your life. No? Many often, very often, our family members are not changed because they don't see the change in us. When we are open to the Holy Spirit, the change will happen. If you show them the testimony of this lady, Nettie's testimony, just see. Her husband used to always oppose her. Uh, it was an unhappy relationship in the beginning, in marriage. And she had a very sharp mouth. She used to cut this one, cut that one. The husband didn't like it, and so many other things. So the husband used to say, But when she came to hear the word of God, it started convicting her of change. Come, show them. मुझे काजर उपरान सात वर्षा मुझे गौर करा चीं बेकार पोना सले अने आओ तेर ना रिनीवल आन भीतर सोले पूर्ण मुझे गौर कर मका सदान साढ़ाई तलो एफो को त्रेती रख बेता देवाचे उत्तर रख बेता अने जे मुझे पहले बिहेवियर असले ते एकदम व्हाइट असले पूर्ण एं देवाचे उत्तर गेता गेता मुझे जीवितान � एनकरेज करूँगा लगलो मुन्गे वो सुंग धारूँगा लगलो 
आनी तो जेना कष्ट जो ते पिड़े कष्ट वेलार पास ते मोजा जीवित बदोलनी आगण पड़े अपने पास मगण को तुम्हें तक दिसले आनीक लगे मैं दौर बिरेस्तार तो जान उगड़ को तू आज प्रेर मिटिंग वचना तुम्हें गॉस्पल इवनींग आसा थी वचना असो तो जान मैं फुढ़े धाटा क्या मोजा जीवित बदोलनी पड़ोन आनी वेलार उदीक सौंपे जाऊंक लगे देव उतर पुरगोटूं वचूं देव उतर मजा जीवित घूँ को पिड़ेत आसा जैसे को उलयता पास तो ये मटा मुझे घरकानी संग तुम्हें पास मगते जे दुसरे मनीस मटा को आये कि ये नवसरने वरवी मजा जीवित बदोलनी पड़ोन कि मजो घरकार फुढ़ें धाटा वो वो संगता तो वे लगी पाता पास देव खरें बाराबर आसा ये कलून ये जाते पाटी मेले उपरान देव बाराबर आसा दिता पुण देव मजा घरकार मनांत आसताना पास ते आसने भोगूंक माँ दिता एक भाषे तो कष्ट होता ती दुएस पीड़ा वाड़ वेता हाँ तुझा बाराबर आसा वो देव उतरत घोटा बोल दिता देखुन मजान ती सुर रहा तक एक भाषे मन नाक तैयार करूं जाता देव उतर तुम वाचतना पास इजाइस प्रवाद्या वरवी हाँ तुझो घरकार भिएना का हम तुझा बाराबर आसा असले उतरानी देव मा ते मन नाक तैयार करता वेन यू आर इन जीजस नथिंग कैन पंक्चर यू बिकॉज द प्रेजेंस ऑफ हिम अशोरिंग यू डोंट वरी आई एम विथ यू इज सफिशंट फॉर यू हाल लोया हाल लोया 